Hello and welcome to Ben Binfro Thought for the Day for Wednesday 9th of February. The Old Testament readings this week are from Leviticus. I'm not sure I know much about Leviticus. I get lost in the Pentateuch once I get beyond about chapter 20 of Exodus. So I thought I should explore it a bit. There's no real narrative in Leviticus, just lots of rules and rituals relating to offerings, slaughter of animals, purification, moral conduct, the observation of festivals and more, punctuated by a couple of sudden killings of transgressors. Pour encourager les autres, presumably, if you'll excuse my terrible French accent. It's hardcore stuff, but, and there are two buts. The first and broader point is that this is, of course, at the heart of what constitutes God's covenant with Israel, the old covenant, a covenant which, despite all the setbacks and failures, managed to keep alive over the centuries the belief in a single, omnipotent, invisible, holy God in a world in which this concept was totally alien. And unless we have some understanding of what stands behind these rules and rituals, how can we really understand the new covenant? That may be a bit overambitious for today, but the second and narrower point is this. One aspect of all these rules and rituals which still chimes today with Jews and Christians alike, although in rather different ways, is the festivals, or some of them. Le Leviticus lists seven, and two more were added later in the Old Testament era. There are spring festivals and autumn festivals. The spring ones include Passover and Pentecost. The autumn ones include Jewish New Year and the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. And that, finally, brings us to today's reading, Leviticus 23, verses 23 to 44, which is about the autumn festivals. I shall confine myself to verses 26 to 31, which describe the Day of Atonement. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Now the tenth day of the seventh month is the day of atonement. You shall be, it shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall deny yourselves and present the Lord's offering by fire. And you shall do no work during that entire day, for it is a day of atonement to make atonement on your behalf before the Lord your God. For anyone who does not practice self-denial during that entire day shall be cut off from the people. And anyone who does any work during that entire day, such a one I will destroy from the midst of the people. You shall do no work. It is a statute forever, throughout your generations and in all your settlements. There's more. Elsewhere in Leviticus, there's a whole chapter, chapter 16, detailing the ritual required to be followed on this, the most solemn of Jewish festivals. The slaughter and offering of bull, goat and ram, and the elaborate performance of the priest conducted in the tabernacle and later in the temple in Jerusalem, as he atones for the transgressions, the uncleanness of the people of Israel. Towards the end, the priest lays his hand on the head of a live goat while confessing all the sins of the people of Israel, thereby putting those sins onto the goat, which is then led away into the wilderness, where it is set loose. Animal offerings disappeared from Jewish life with the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE replaced 
in the rabbinic world which followed by recitation of biblical texts by liturgy, rather less colourful but taken no less seriously. For those of us of a certain age, the festival conjures up images of the 1973 Arab-Israeli war, deliberately started by the Arab coalition on the Day of Atonement. The religious focus of this festival is very familiar. The inevitability of sin, the need for forgiveness before God, our God, the one God. Perhaps Christians should celebrate it too. But it's based on old covenant concepts. Sin is judged against a harsh and complex set of behavioural norms, which is how God chose to reveal himself to his people at that time. Absolution is therefore also achieved wholly by way of external behaviour, through sacrificial offerings, real or notional, through fasting, through good deeds. The new covenant has, of course, provided us with a different path. We come to God through his Son, not through ritual and pious behaviour. The supreme sacrifice has been made. As one of the rather wonderfully named early church fathers, John Chrysostom, put it in the 4th century when such things were no doubt fiercely debated, Christian sacrifice is inexhaustible and daily, he said, because we offer the same person, not one sheep today and another tomorrow. Yes, our path is indeed radically different, but I'm not sure I always get that. External rules can be comforting, and I catch myself clinging to them, but trying to use Jesus as a softening influence on them, if that makes any sense. That way I can stay within my comfort zone, measure my steps, and set my own target number of steps. Always a challenging target, of course, but often missing the point. I might have made a good Pharisee, though. For anyone interested, the first Jewish holiday of 2022 is the Festival of Purim in mid-March. It celebrates the exploits of Esther in the book of the Old Testament, named after her. More nationalism than theology at play there, I think, but worth looking up. Have a good day.